Hey, it's Avi from JustRightMusic.com. Thank you for being here. Hi. Hello. How are you? I'm Vaughn from Community, apparently. Now, today I want to talk about time. Terrifying. No, no, no. I want to talk about time signatures. You read the video title. We're going to talk, we're talking about alternating time signatures and how it's cool and how we want to do more of it. Time signatures dictate how many notes are in a bar and what type of note gets the beat. But you can manipulate them to create this kind of off-kilter sort of sound or a kind of push-pull rhythmic effect. Today I'm going to show you step by step how to do this and how to take it to the next level. Before we get down to business, hit the subscribe button and bell below for more videos helping you write better music and stay sane as an artist. If you can't tell, I'm super excited about this. I love playing with time signatures and, and time and rhythm in general, and by the end of this video, I think you're going to know why. Most popular music today uses one of the most common time signatures, 4-4. Four, four. It's actually also called common time, and it's sometimes written like this. But we can also take advantage of other time signatures and manipulate them to refine and diversify our own music. So let's get to writing our first alternating time riff. Step one, we need to choose a starting time signature. Now, if you don't remember how to read time signatures, it consists of two numbers, one on top of the other. The top number tells us how many beats are in a measure or what number to count to. And the bottom number tells us what type of note gets the count. We're actually not going to concern ourselves with the bottom number today, only the top number. Okay, to get us rolling, let's start with one of the really simple time signatures that you're probably already familiar with. Something like 4-4, four, 3-4, four, four, or 6-8. For our purposes, I'm going to choose 6-8. Next, we want to add or subtract a beat from the top number of our time signature. I'm going to subtract from my top number, so that means that 6-8 is now going to become a 5-8. In order to alternate between them, we would have 6-8, 5-8, 6-8, 5-8. Now let's pick a note, any note, and just kind of play the count over it in, in eighth notes, just to sort of see how it feels. In terms of the emphasis or where the stress, uh, stresses are in the beats, it'll feel something like... You're probably already starting to feel the sort of that rhythmic play that is so characteristic of this sound. Now that we have a feel for what we're doing, it's time to move on to step two, and that is to pick a scale. A scale is a series of notes, usually five to seven, that exist on a scale between dark and bright. Think like major often sounds happy or bright to people, whereas minor can sound darker or more melancholic or, or beautiful. You you know what, I've convinced myself, we're going to use the minor scale. The minor scale actually has two other versions of itself as well. The harmonic minor scale raises the seventh scale degree to create that half step between seven and one like we have in the major scale. That means when we hit a cadence moving from five to one, it hits just as hard as it does in a major key because of that half step. The melodic minor scale raises both the sixth and the seventh scale degree, but only when you're ascending. In pitch. When you're descending, do you go back to the natural minor scale? It, it's weird, I know. Okay, we picked our scale. We're going to use the A minor scale. Now it's time to move on to step three. We're going to play the scale starting from one from the beginning on each bar. So we're just playing the scale, we're just going up in the scale. Every time we go to the next bar, we're returning back to the beginning. So you're gonna play A, B, C, D, E, F, A, B, C, D, E, A, B, C, D, E, F, A, B, C, D, E. Perfect, we're nearly there. You can probably hear this coming together and I bet your inner ear has a bunch of stuff that it wants to do with this. Next, all we need to do is repeat this alternating pattern between 6-8 and 5-8 and just put it on a loop. Finally, to really make this come together, you want to figure out where you want to put the stresses for the beats. 6-8 is a little bit more straightforward. It has the stresses on 1 and on 4. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. But with 5-8, you can have the stresses on 1 and 3 or 1 and 4. For 1 and 3, it would sound like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 
and for 1 and 4 it would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Personally, for this example, I want to put the stress on 4. In 5-8, this would be a grouping of 3 and 2. And the reason why I like this is because it is because it gives us a strong beat right before another strong beat, which is going to be the one of this of the six eight. It's going to enhance the feeling of being cut off, which makes that downbeat feel like it's hitting us a little bit harder, it makes it feel more off kilter. That's just my preference though. Which one did you prefer? Let me know down in the comments. Now, there you have it. You just made your first alternating time signature riff and or melody or whatever you want to call it. But I don't want to leave it just there. Now I want to go just a little bit further and show you what you can do with this by you creating patterns and using different rhythms. We have a really cool skeleton here and we can add a bunch of stuff to it and vary it to create some really cool music. One of my favorite things to do is to add a bar into the pattern itself, doing something like 665. 665. With the melody that we've made so far, the pattern is small enough that it kind of feels like its own contained thing. I really like this because having the six repeat itself once is almost enough for it to establish itself, but then we have the five, which makes it just a little bit harder to find the beat. It's like we're being given something and having it be yanked away right before we feel like it's ours. But repeating that measure of six, eight, even just one more time, really eats away at that sense of cohesion to that pattern, to that contained pattern, in a way that I think is really cool and interesting. Another thing you can do is to change up the notes themselves so that you're not just playing a scale ascending, you can do an ascending, then a descending, or have it not linear at all. Linear melodies are actually pretty well suited to this type of thing, but I do also think it's important to add some skips or some jumps to break things up so that we just avoid the fatigue of not fatigue our listeners. Finally, you can also break up the rhythms a little bit to further divest ourselves from this linearity and this sort of modular exercise that we've created for ourselves. Though, honestly, I think it sounds pretty great as it is. That's it. Do you see how much fun this is? You can recreate this starting from any time signature just add or subtract from the top number, and that's all. That's it. That's all you have to do. Are you an alternating time signature convert now? That does not roll off the tongue. Now, you normally only hear this kind of thing in certain genres or in certain cultures, which is why I love using it elsewhere. It's, it's such a breath of fresh air from just one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Even if it's just used sparingly as like a short interlude or something in like a small section of a song, it's enough to break that 4-4 four, four monotony up, at least for me. I, it's monotonous to me. I don't know. I guess I'm allergic to it or something. Regardless, it's a great way to diversify your compositional palette nonetheless, and it's something that you can use, like I said, sparingly even, to achieve some really cool sounds and to really play with your listeners' ears. But it's also easy to get boxed in with these melodies, making it too linear, making it too sounding like a scale exercise. Don't worry, I've got the perfect solution for you. My free guide, Seven Ways to Write a More Effective Melody, gives you proven pro-level tools that you can use on any melody in any genre. Go grab this thing, it's totally free. Do not write another melody without getting this free guide. Head to justwritemusic.com, there's a link down in the doobly-doo. Thanks so much for watching and for hanging out with me today and for just make letting me be weird talking about this stuff. This is why I made this channel, really. I'm Avi from JustRightMusic.com and I will see you guys next time. Peace out.